In the early 1990s, Francis Arnold was trying to design stronger and faster enzymes, proteins that are critical to chemical reactions. So when I started engineering proteins, I didn't know how hard it would be. For small proteins, scientists could pick and choose the building blocks they changed to create new, useful functions. But for large proteins like enzymes, it was impossible to pinpoint the structural changes that would result in a desired characteristic. And after a number of experiments that were failures, I realized that I would have to find a different approach to solving the problem. In her lab at the California Institute of Technology, Arnold realized she could put an ancient biological process to work in a test tube. Because we can take the DNA and evolve it without understanding at the molecular level how that process gives rise to new function, we can still acquire that. Arnold's pioneering work in the directed evolution of enzymes began by creating DNA mutations. You can make easily a billion or a hundred billion, a thousand billion, a trillion copies of that DNA, all that have different mutations in them. She invented techniques to screen for enzymes with slightly more of a desired characteristic and ways to select these enzymes to be replicated in bacteria. When I started publishing papers demonstrating that I could make more stable enzymes, that I could alter their substrate specificity, that I can make them much more active, those were all things that no one knew how to do. Today, Arnold's dozens of patented techniques and tools for directed evolution are used to make enzymes in hundreds of products, from detergents to animal feeds, and are enabling new processes for making renewable fuels, replacing toxins in green chemistry, and accelerating drug discovery. 25 years ago, it was considered the lunatic fringe. Scientists didn't do that. Gentlemen didn't do that. But since I'm an engineer and not a gentleman, I had no problem with that. <laughs>